Uh, hi everyone this morning. Um, for the purpose of the recording, good morning wherever you are and good morning to everybody in the room. Um, I am uh, Maciek, as you know from yesterday, I'm British and um, I'm going to show you uh, something that we do in Europe, which is a very accurate measurements. Um, I'm going to show you the, the, a video, uh, I'm going to roll the video with a drone voice in the background and I will manipulate the voice of the drone to answer any questions and to pause the video. Um, the uh, uh, people in the room decided that um, it's good to maybe you know, switch between those uh, deep code reviews with, uh, with Dave, with Dave uh, 1 today, because this is a Dave 1 today, and, um, and uh, insert those sort of four, four to five minutes uh, quick, quick clips and dances. So what we're going to do uh, right now, uh, we, I'm going to show you a not live uh, a recording of the live system. That's in the campus, it's in building 16. It's available for you know, live viewing, if you so wish, in person or remote. And we're basically going to use uh, VPP technology as a, in a virtual switching function um, that is uh, root forwarding IPv4 packets, you know, those fancy graphs we showed yesterday. Uh, the FIP is full of 2 million IPv4 routes, and we will be sending 64 byte uh, frames. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar intimately with what Ethernet is, um, Especially, I guess, if you, um, uh, I, I don't know what's the correct uh, word for it, um, uh, uh, younger than me, um, you, you probably notice that Ethernet only stands for, it's actually there's no Ethernet anymore, there's only gigabit Ethernet, and this is the 10 gig. So when I got into the networking, the cables were still yellow and they were much lower, lower speed. Um, Frame rate for 64 byte packets is 14.88 million PPS. In fact, there is more digits afterwards. And, uh, and uh, you might be confused when uh, calculating this, uh, this rate. So very quick maths for you. The 64 byte is actually not a full frame uh, length, right? Always, always, always add 20 bytes. Okay? There's an interframe gap, uh, there is preamble, but whether it is a 10 meg Ethernet, 100 meg, 1 gig, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, the same formula works because the sublayer in Ethernet has not changed. So we have a line rate of 1488. We're going to show how this thing does 12 times of that. If you have any questions, please ask over uh, using microphone. So let's see if the drone voice work. works. In this short video clip, we will demonstrate OpenVPP software running as a virtual switch, forwarding packets between 12 and 10 GB physical. Right, enough of the drone. So, um, this is basically uh, the setup. I forgot my pointer. So, <clears throat> yesterday I showed it on the slide. Um, we have a UCS machine. Now I can talk a bit more of the detail. It's a two socket machine. It's running a Xeon E5, it's, it's a two socket Xeon E5. Um, 2668v3, uh, uh, 16 core per chip, per socket, and it's clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. Turbo boost disabled, all the fancy power management, blah, blah, disabled, so that it always gives the same performance, doesn't fluctuate. It's running stock Ubuntu, 14.04.03 Trusty, Ubuntu, and it's uh, running a code from uh, the FIDO, right? FIDO repo. Uh, VPP repo, and um, it's running in the uh, in the user mode uh, on the on the host. Uh, it's using a DPTK uh, driver, and I don't know whether we already moved to the DPTK two two or is it two one? It's either two one zero or two two zero. We actually haven't seen much difference between the two. Uh, NICs are Niantic NICs, so there are two port, ten gig X five twenty Intel, and the board is uh, Cisco, I think, and the plastic and the metal is also Cisco. It's driven by Ixia, and uh, you see the configuration. It's all V4. So let me switch the drone again. We will show the MDR packet throughput for 64. Okay, I'm gonna skip the drone going through the... And by the way, if you have noticed, that's how I sound. Receive side scaling. When I recorded. When recorded. Ah, okay. Slash 24. Description. So, VVP runs on 24 threads. Uh, we have a hyper-threading hyper enabled on the box, but we are not using hyper-threading. So we have a thread per core. So 24 cores. We have 12 10 gigi ports, 
Dave talked about RSS, receive side scaling. We're using RSS to load balance each port across the threads, to two threads. So that's why RSS is two. And we have two million IPv4 entries. IPv4 entries are slash 24. There was a separate recording, which we can roll later, where I actually walk for the setup to the you know, goring detail coming from the metal, uh, hardware, all show commands, LSPCIs, LSCPUs, memory, and so on. So if you guys really bored, we can go for that later so, uh, in the smoothing forwarding table. So let me just perform the get rid of the drone and move the needle. Because I talk for this. Right. So that's Ixia, <coughs> a hardware router tester. 12 ports, 12 flow groups. Each flow group is sending packets at 64 bytes. It's sending at 77% of rate. I'll explain why in a moment. Each port is sending, uh, if we double click on not this, but the live system, which is in the, uh, in the setup thing, is sending 166.7K flows. Because it's, set, it's sending to every and single FIB entry uh, in, the, in the VVP uh, lookup table. 166.7K. You had enough coffee times 12, that's 2 million. So we're hitting all 2 million entries. And, and if I'm telling too much detail, Dave, Damian, Dave, please just shut me down. OK, so I'm sending uh, packets. And uh, you can see how many packets I'm sending. Oh, actually, not me, the tester. 11.46 million PPS. That's a 77% of 10 gig line rate for 64 bytes. Right? So if you divide 10 uh, million, 10 million? No, 10 billion, 10 gig, 10 billion, 10 billion bits per second by 84 times 20, you're going to get 1488, and 77% of that is that. We are receiving what we're sending. Oh, no. There is a frames delta. For those of you not familiar with testers, these are what we call frames in flight. When I was young and entered the lab, somebody told me these are the packets on the wire. And I asked them, can I see them on the wire? And how big is the wire? The longer the wire, the more packets? Not true. What this shows really is what Ixia accounted when sent and did not account when received. The Ixia way, the way, is, the way Ixia works, it's doing this in FPGAs. It's fast hardware, but it's not zero time. So it's basically, we still call them uh, frames in flight, but, um, but I basically not accounted on the receive because the hardware is slow. We need faster hardware. Talk to your Ixia rep. The direct deposit, it's sort of in flight for a while. Right. Now, if you think about it, we're saving 11.46 million of the buggers. We only have 130, so the hardware is actually not that slow. But we want to count every bit. We want to count every packet. Not, that, not, not because it's, uh, you know, we will disqualify the hardware when it is non-zero, but because we want to understand how the system works. That's why when we say zero frame loss, we really want to make sure that not a single bit got lost. Because if it is, we need to understand why. Because in case it's the disease spreads, you know, we can uh, eat the, uh, the system. So let me uh, scroll a bit more because I talk, I talk, I talk, uh, the drone talks, sorry. Um, okay, total. So that's the number that I have on the banner. That's the number that I would like to get into everybody's head. Because this is the number that we call OMFG number, a big number. This shows that the computer with a large lookup table can forward 137.5 million packets per second. A single computer. And this computer is not easy, even fully busy. It's one of the things that I think we've been missing as an industry to show to people that running network functions on computers can actually deliver performance and service. It's important because not many people in the Definitely at CNFV and SP community believe that this is still the right way to go. And I think we need to convince them. Vincent, microphone, microphone. 
Since you say you like big numbers, what's the biggest numbers you, you did measure? Because with DPDKs and test PMD, you can go ab uh, above 200 millions uh, on such systems. So what's the big, biggest number you, you've been looking at? Uh, if I could answer your question uh, with the closing banner. So can we delay the answer okay. to your question? Thank you. All right. So let's keep rolling because it was supposed to be only 4 minutes 27 and I think we over the budget. Uh, and we still have a one minute to go, right? Uh, so let me just speed time. Can you speed time? You can't. You can speed the recording. So one of the things that we're trying to get into community is also to come up with a set of universal metrics um, to measure performance. And in fact, the industry uh, has uh, came to conclusion that the only way to measure uh, efficiency of work, whether it's human or machine, is time. Because time is the only resource that we can't recover. So time actually matters. Time of processing the packet, delivering the service matters. So it's all about time. So um, I stopped the traffic. And uh, this banner doesn't go away. Let me just... How many packets have I lost? Who knows the answer? Who is paying attention to from Dave? How many packets have we lost? One. So, right. That's the frames delta. I know the resolution of this pixelated thing is we lost one packet. One packet out of how many? So let me just uh, scroll to make an easy answer. Right. So one packet out of, what's this number? 12.5 billion. So what's the packet loss ratio? Roughly. What's the frame loss ratio? Okay, I make it easier. Is it less than 10 to minus seven? Yes. Right. So, according to ITU, this is a non-drop rate. Remember the zero thing I mentioned yesterday? This is a non-drop rate, according to ITU. So, it's accepted in a system. And, uh, and that's the disease I talked about. It spreads. Because the reason why we dropped the packet wasn't because the system that we care about dropped the packet. It's because somebody else did. And I'll show you where the guy is. Here we go. Who dropped the packet? Yeah. We changed cables, we changed transceivers five times with three different human engineers. The bugger is still there. Okay? Every 10 billions of, of packets or so, it drops a packet. Do you know how bad it is? It is so bad that if I take a new test engineer on board and I ask him to do the test with zero frame loss, he comes back after three days and he says that he can't find it. I ask him how many packets is he losing, he said, oh, you know, sometimes five, sometimes ten, sometimes two, sometimes one, but it's not zero. Okay? So the guy is obviously new, he doesn't know that it, you know, the, the ratio matters. I ask him to find a zero, a non-drop packet rate, he can't find one. So uh, the story here is that uh, we actually are dropping those packets. Uh, they are probably dropped either in a transceiver or in a socket of the transceiver. Uh, we did not change NICs, so we suspect it's one of the NICs. But that, with that, I wanted to finish my uh, rant on uh, packet drops. Uh, what I wanted to make sure that you get into, uh, that I get across is that, in fact, we did not drop this packet in the software and in a, in a system that we've been testing here, definitely not in VPP. And don't believe the computer dropped it either. It was the peripheral and it was, it's a peripheral error, but um, as you will see in most of those videos, I've been recording and recording and recording and I always get this one or two and the ratio is about one per uh, one to three per 10 uh, billion of packets. And it comes, it, 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 it comes so close to my ITU number 
that really, uh, you know, angers me. And, and funnily enough, I'm not the only one. Karsten from Iantec has exactly the same opinion because he has exactly the same thing with test engineers. It reduces the efficiency of system evaluation and also finding where the problem is. Right, and you verified it was in the NIC because you checked all the other layers? That's correct. Okay. Now. So, um, so we yes. started this discussion before you started this. Uh, yes. So you're going down the path that we should have zero frame loss. And well, I, I, I just, it, it's, it's about really people understanding what zero means. And I tell you another a little anecdote. When we started to test with Yantec, we were relying on another metric from Ixia called percentage of packet loss ratio. The percentage of packet loss ratio was reported as 0.000%. Mm. Guess what it means? When the system was reporting zero, it wasn't zero. When my binary search was searching for zero packet loss, it was breaking on the 0.000%, but in fact, packet loss was at 0.0001 or two or three or four, rounded up was zero, and I had weird results. And in fact, uh, we talked to Ixi about it, and uh, we asked them to fix the calculator, because when we actually counted the frames and we had a binary search on a zero frame loss, it was fine, and they're gonna fix it. Yeah, so, I'm sorry, wait, I just, just to finish this thought, though, so you're, you're, just, you're just making comments about the accuracy of what zero really means. And of, of what non-drop rate really means. So, for example, I tell you another, I have, I'll give you another example. A lot of people report throughput for these systems by blasting 100% of line rate and measuring how many packets make through. And some people refer to it as throughput per RFC 2544, okay? And the problem with RFC 2544 that it does not define what NDR is. It relies on RFC 1242. The problem with RFC 1242 is that it also doesn't report what NDR is. And then, you know, this sort of thing is buried and, and basically confusing. And in order to compare the systems, you really need to, to have some reference. And that's, that's my reference, zero. Yeah, I was going to say... Uh, we're gonna, we have a, probably just question, time for one question. I was going to say, it'd be nice to see it with V6. Uh, next demo. Now, one little comment. The reason why we're not blasting it at 100%, because our Niantic nick we have here, is actually is the guy that's limiting us. Because uh, we, have, we are using two ports, 10 gig per nick, and um, the limit of the nick is about 23 to 24 million DPS not 2 times 14.88. And in this case, we actually uh, limited by, by the NIC. And with that, uh, I wanted to thank you. I'm available for comments and questions. Uh, Vincent, very quick, because we need to give back uh, time to the code. Okay, okay so let's okay? go offline. All right, thank you. Thanks very much.